Hey, so I just got back from a preview screening of Late Night with the Devil. I do that in quotation marks because this movie was released in America, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or something. We just got it here in Australia, though. So, you know, I love those delays, you know? Don't, don't you just love them anyway? So, this movie is an indie horror film that is one of the most creative movies that I've seen in probably years. It's so up my alley. I love the aesthetic. I love the sort of weird vibe that it gives off. Everything about it is just really, really cool and sort of nerdy as it embraces the sort of silly side of horror as well like it's not afraid to be a little bit corny but it's also deeply disturbing in some specific ways as well there's just a lot here where it's balancing all these clashing tones in a way that I think is really really well done anyway so this is directed by the Australian brother duo in Cameron and Colin Carnes who also made a movie called Scare Campaign which I really love and another one called Hundred Bloody Acres which I haven't actually seen but it seems up my alley as well and this movie stars David Dastamelchia, who we have seen so far in bit parts in films like Prisoners and The Dark Knight and also The Suicide Squad. Not Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad. Big difference there. Anyway, so usually though we see this actor play either quirky characters or more often than not like creepy characters and here he kind of mixes the two where we see moments of him being deeply disturbed but he also adds a bit of charm here with this character where we really do get some insight into seeing him be like this affable guy who we like. But it's just on the line, it's just on the edge, where we can see that something's going on with him. He's a little bit suspicious, partly due to being told some of his backstory that sounds a little bit weird early on in the film, but also in his performance we can see that he's a guy who is conflicted when it comes to being the smiley host of this TV show that we're watching, but also really being a bit of a selfish guy who only cares about the ratings, so we get sort of an inkling that maybe everything that's going on within the film could just be a hoax to maybe up the TV. TV ratings. It's definitely a question that we wrestle with during the entire film, but we're also deeply disturbed and worried about all of the possible supernatural things going on as well. There's a great balance there where you're not quite sure what to trust and what's going on, and it really sort of stays on that line for the entirety of the film, and I think it does a fantastic job of it. Anyway, so I probably should say that this movie is set in real time, as it tells the story of a late night talk show episode, basically. Supposedly it's like this long lost taping of of this show that was lost for many a year or whatever and finally now we're watching this like haunted tape of this show that came out in the 70s and with that man does this movie commit it has the right look to it it even has commercial breaks and all these sorts of things it really commits to being this in real time tv episode basically where some creepy things you know start to happen and i just think that that's a really cool and creative way to do it and it doesn't hold back in terms of like cutting out of that reality apart from during the commercial breaks where we finally do every so often get to see the behind the scenes just a little bit just to give us the idea that maybe not everything is a hoax like we're thinking you know we're, we're actually seeing some of the characters freaking out behind the scenes so we know that you know they're not acting for the cameras if that makes any sense but yeah this movie does a great job of putting you in as the audience watching this tv show and also does a great job of impersonating a late night talk show as well like it does have the jokes that it's supposed to have it's a funny show or movie or whatever you want to call it but it's also very clearly a horror movie as well and so there's something about that where the movie puts you in this place of tension constantly where you don't know if it's going to be a joke or it's going to be a scare not that this film is particularly scary scary exactly but you know what I mean something else that I really appreciate about this movie is that it's also very funny in dark ways as well like when the shit starts to go down you can't help but laugh because the movie in a meta context knows that what's going on can come off as corny sometimes there's some great visual effects in here that are like practical effects and they don't look particularly convincing they don't look real they clearly look like they're inspired from 70s horror films but there's something about that commitment that does feel kind of silly but also impressive in a way and also so over the top that you can't help but laugh with the film not at it. There's just a lot going on here that I think could have gone terribly wrong in the wrong hands. I, I feel like the sort of tones clashing and everything really might not have come off as successful if it was in the hands of some lesser directors but here, I don't know man, we're, we're in good hands. It's as simple as that really. Late Night with the Devil is just phenomenal really. I fucking love it. Like this is so my kind of movie. But 
but it's also the kind of movie that like right after you're watching it you're like did i like that like it's kind of one of those ones that you have to sit on it for a while because you're not really sure how you feel about it you know what i mean and it definitely rides the line of becoming a little bit too stupid and silly for its own good i will say for me it never crossed it though i just thought this movie was really cool i appreciated it a lot and it's definitely one for the film and tv nerds out there this is not really a um like a basic bitch horror film you know like if this is your first horror movie that you're ever watching you might not appreciate it as much as me but for the hardcore horror fans out there definitely check this one out it's it's incredible now i did want to lastly just comment on the elephant in the room the ai i actually forgot about the ai while i was watching the movie and then when it was nearly over i'm like wait when were the ai moments i guess they were the opening segments to the late night talk show screens that we see throughout and with that being said it's hardly noticeable in my opinion i don't think it's entirely excusable when you can pay artists to do the job and it's not like it would have been that hard or expensive i imagine but we should take into consideration too that this is definitely an indie film this wouldn't have had the biggest budget in the world or anything like that you know we're not talking about a marvel movie here and i do think that there's a difference between a marvel movie using ai and something like this which in all other ways is extremely creative i just don't think that this is the movie that we should be attacking um when it comes to using these sorts of tools because this isn't like the kind of movie that has carte blanche over everything you know like i'm sure that there are struggles behind the makings of little films like these this isn't a big blockbuster movie you know what i mean i do think that there is a difference that some people are ignoring when they're sort of boycotting this movie which people are at the moment but at the same time i can kind of see the argument against it because when it comes to AI use particularly in art like this it's a slippery slope and it is sort of a scary idea to think well if you can excuse this maybe you can excuse the use of AI in one more little segment or one more you know little aspect here and there and it could just build up over time from film to film until we're getting entirely fucking AI scenes or entirely AI movies which honestly could be the death of art which is kind of scary to think about maybe that's an exaggeration I don't really know it's a bit early to tell but there is sort of a concern there i will say and i do think that it's interesting taking that critical approach when it comes to late night with the devil but i do think that we're sort of barking up the wrong tree when we're sort of criticizing this one so harshly when i'm sure much more egregious uses of it is being used in higher budgeted films that we just don't really know about because we weren't told maybe i think the ai thing is sort of a non-issue when it comes to this movie only because i feel like it really capsizes that issue with its creativity in every other aspect of the film it's written super well it's acted super well the effects in it are very fun um there, there's just a lot in here that is fantastic filmmaking and i don't think that a few uses of this ai should take away from that i don't know if that's controversial to say or not it's a bit of a confusing subject but overall late night Night with the Devil is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. I can't say a bad thing about it, I don't think. Apart from maybe the fact that I don't know if I understood everything about it, it's definitely the kind of movie that I'm going to be reading up, like ending explanations and all that kind of shit in the next few days because I'm fascinated to learn more and find out about all the Easter eggs and shit and references and stuff to 70s TV shows and stuff that I'm sure I missed. This is definitely like a movie for eagle eyed viewers to pick stuff like that out as well, which I think is something to appreciate there's a lot to appreciate here it's it's a very cool movie i guess that's about all that i have to say please do the things which is like comment share subscribe all that shit and i'm out of goodbye